Live from Lagos, this is Business Incorporated with me, Boston Namofai. I'm in today for Chimeze Obiwagu, and we welcome you to the program. Coming in the next half hour, Nigerian stock market holds world's number one record with 12.1% index return in the new year. And Morocco is said to receive tenders for its $4.6 billion natural gas project. And in the UK, not too good to fail. Never too big to go down. Construction giant Carillon PLC files for voluntary liquidation. Now let's get the show started. And we're starting from Nigeria. It's been a roller coaster year 2018 for the Nigerian stock market as it hits the world's number one record in the first two weeks with 12.1% composite index return. That's been reported. The local boss leads other emerging markets globally with nearly two trillion naira increase in equity cap in just nine sessions. The advances have been across nearly all sectors, but led largely by the banks, the industrials, the consumer goods, the oil and gas and insurance. And you can see the Bloomberg chart there how the correlation is between the Nigeria's uh, stock market and the price of crude oil. Let's uh, keep it in Nigeria, shall we? The United Nations uh, the weekend appointed the Minister of Finance, Kemi Adyosho, as a member of the UN's Investments Committee on its joint staff pension fund. The Under Secretary General of the UN, Jan Beagle, confirmed Adiosian's appointment into the committee that would serve a one year term uh, effective from January the 1st, 2018. The purpose of the UN pension investment was to provide uh, a pension, death, that disability, and other related benefits for staff of the United Nations and other organizations admitted to membership in the fund. The fund currently serves 23 member organizations with nearly 130,000 active participants and approximately, approximately 75,000 retirees in nearly 200 countries around the world. So let's track the market as we speak, and we're looking uh, to the African continent to start to Nigerian stock market. Yes, was the first, uh, as the number one in the world, but now we're losing a little bit of that shit today. We lost the uh, 48,000, so we're now around 42,637. In intraday, the market was down 0.61%. We're looking at some profit taken here on the Nigerian market that's done 12.1% since the New Year started. In South Africa, the GS is holding 60,000, as you can see there, by two tenths of a percent this Monday, this afternoon, and the Egyptian market off track by half a percent, 15,182. In Kenya, the uh, stock exchange, the Nairobi Securities Exchange, was 1.07 percent last Friday. Today, Safaricom is pushing that index back into green territory, 1.77 percent at 28. 0.75 Kenyan shillings, more than 1.9 million shares of Safaricom, the telecom giant, has so far been traded on Monday in Nairobi. Move that and let's cross to the Middle East and you can see the regional exchanges reporting mixed numbers at intraday on Monday. Of course, Sunday was the first trading day for the week in the Middle East. You can see Abu Dhabi and the Saudi market, the Tidal Wool stock market, up in the day, but the Dubai financial markets that the uh, DFM and the Qatar Stock Exchange in the green. The Qatari market is down much deeper than the rest in the, in the GCC, a negative 2.48%. And we go now to the biggest corporate news in the United Kingdom today, the construction giant Carillon PLC involved in everything from hospitals to the high-speed rail filing for compulsory liquidation, or what you call bankruptcy, after a last-ditch effort to save the company through a government bailout failed. The company, which employs 43,000 people worldwide, with about 20,000 of them in the UK, held talks with the government on Sunday, requesting for £300 million. That's about $412 million to stay afloat, but the government says no. So today, the board of Carillon PLC says it has concluded that it had no choice but to take steps to enter into compulsory liquidation with immediate effect and has obtained a court approval uh, for the bankruptcy filing. So let's start takes us to the European trading day and the markets are seeing red. Let's talk to Daniel Coop, my colleague at the DWTV, live at the Frankfurt Stock Exchange. Daniel, it's good to see you. Well, let's, uh, let's come together for the first time in the new year, uh, but let's chat to a few issues today. And that story from the UK, Carol on PLC, filing for bankruptcy, going down with nearly 20,000 employees in the UK. That's bad news. Now some banks are reporting that they may get hit by the carry on bad news of liquidation. Is this news being closely watched in Frankfurt? 
Yeah, hi there, Bozen. Very nice to see you for the first time now in 2018. And yes, I can tell you that investors here at the Frankfurt Stock Exchange are monitoring uh, this issue, of course, also with very great concern. You mentioned it, more than 40,000 people now fearing that they could be without jobs. And yes, it's a story that uh, many here at the Frankfurt Stock Exchange have been following for quite a long time. Remember last year in July when the company issued for the first time this a profit warning then by that time already the share price was tumbling and uh, it was not even anymore listed anymore in the FTSE 100 the index in the United Kingdom with the 100 most important companies and uh, the problem is it's a company and uh, not just constructing but also in charge of lots of uh, services that are normally done by the government but that were outsourced to the company such as uh, prisons for example also many hospitals are under the operation of uh, this company so yeah there is really this question and also the UK government today is being criticized by investors today for being maybe a little bit too blind uh, when they were just focusing on Brexit and not really seeing those problems really happening to this uh, company so it's going to be very interesting what's going to happen you mentioned uh, that Spain's Banco Santander might be jumping in in order to find this company um, but it's really going to be interesting what's going to happen because many jobs are right now on the edge it's not certain what's going to happen with all those public services and uh, yeah it's certainly a topic uh, many people here are watching and monitoring at the stock exchange as well yes uh, very interesting uh, Daniel but again I, I would have loved to see what type of car you drive around in Frankfurt or Berlin uh, where you do your job at uh, uh, at uh, uh, GWTV, uh, but the, the chief executive officer at a BMW, uh, the Detroit Motor Show called 2017 a year of transition. What's the outlook for your German, for the German car makers in the new year? Well, I have to actually disappoint you, Bozen, because I'm actually not anymore coming with my car to the stock exchange since I moved recently to Frankfurt, and it's only now a five-minute walk, and parking here in the city is just too expensive. But yes, I can tell you that, of course, investors are also very monitoring closely what's happening at the Detroit Auto Show. Many are saying that 2018 is going to be uh, quite a bumpy road also for car makers in the United States. On the one hand, we have to remember that in the United States, says we are going to see higher interest rates in 2018. Still more than 70% of car owners in the U.S. are financing their cars with a credit. So that's getting more expensive. Also, when you talk, for example, about Volkswagen and other German car makers, we saw in the last year uh, dropping sales numbers, mostly actually in December. But when you look at the broader picture and uh, Volkswagen as the number one uh, car maker here in Germany, Germany. Actually, the outlook for 2018 looks uh, very promising. Uh, the U.S. market, of course, important for car makers, but right now Volkswagen is more looking over, for example, to China, to Russia, and also to uh, Latin America, where we, where we are really seeing a growing market. Uh, also, I can tell you from the shareholders' perspective, they're actually pretty much happy uh, with the performance of Volkswagen uh, shares in one year. Shares here at the the blue chip index DAX of Volkswagen were jumping with 19 percent. It seems uh, that the diesel gate scandal has been managed quite well recently by Volkswagen. And even in the United States, where shares of Volkswagen are being traded at NASDAQ, uh, those uh, there also we see shares uh, within one year jumping up to a level of 38 percent. Just today, and we're going to talk about that in a second, shares are down. But but that's mostly regarding to a very strong euro that we're seeing at the moment, Bosun. Yes, that's what we're seeing at the moment. And, and again, uh, it's been all red across major European markets today. But I'm looking at the numbers now, the FTSE, uh, MIB, which is the Italian market, and the Spanish market, the ABEX 35, are recovering. But the FTSE 100, the German DAX, where you are, and the, uh, the Cacoron are still in the red. Uh, are you guys getting more of the European bites more than the rest of the European markets this Monday? 
Well, the euro is really going up and up. And whenever um, I was just checking it a few moments ago, when the euro was even going up to 123, reaching uh, a, a very new high here at the uh, stock market. And whenever we see a very strong euro, we are really uh, having difficulties here in the trading day because many of the companies here listed in the blue chip index, DAX, make lots of their money with exports. So we are seeing shares, for example, of BASF, uh, Continental, um, all those uh, shares are right now down because they are really doing and creating lots of their income with export. And uh, whenever we are seeing a very strong euro, those uh, products abroad get more expensive, which many then feel that uh, maybe they're not only anymore that much attractive for them. On the other hand, I can also tell you that we are very closely monitoring a developing story coming today from uh, France, from Airbus. Airbus is announcing that they are really considering to uh, stop building the Airbus 380, this uh, mega uh, airliner, two-deck airline carrying up to 700 passengers. Airbus has had lots of problems with this Airbus uh, regarding to the sales numbers. Uh, they are now saying that in case Emirates, uh, who has more than 100 of this Airbus 380 already in their fleet, in case they are also not placing a new order, they might be really considering to stop uh, the production of this airbar stop. So this is also a very interesting and developing story that we're following right now here at the stock market, Boston. Thank you so much, Daniel. Coop and get to see you uh, some other time. I'm just going to say goodbye for now. Uh, I'm not too sure when we're going to get together for lunch uh, between Frankfurt and Lagos. See you and goodbye to everyone. Uh,